Hey guys. So today we have the Samoag Owners Club with the Taj handle. Let me get that back in the water. And the rest of the shave is gear that uh, friendly Redditors, um, YouTubers, friends online, fellow shavers have, have sent to me just out of the kindness of their hearts. And it's terrific because there's a camaraderie there. Um, once you've just established relationships with people, just helped uh, help people out with advice, and then they're just people you you kind of interact with more than others, and you just kind of bond a little bit. And then next thing you know, you're sending each other stuff. Hey, try this out, you know that sort of thing. And so this is the uh, benefit, the fruits of that. And this is an a gem junior by uh, gem of course and I was reading and inside there it says Brooklyn and uh, I think some people call this a Brooklyn razor as another name but on the back it does say gem junior so it is pretty clear uh, and it is that uh, lather catcher style uh, a little bit different from the DE's and we're going to be putting this same PTFE blade in it that I've been using. Uh, this will be the ninth shave, and it's been doing well. I have noticed maybe a slight drop-off in performance, but we're going to keep rolling. And then another generous gift uh, by uh, Refined Edge, someone I've been commenting on. Did I say this was from HD Shaves? Yeah, that's who provided that. And... Uh, he heard I was trying out some of the uh, single edge blades, single edge razors, and uh, and was just curious. And he just decided, hey man, I can help you out with um, with some of them. I, I bought some blades from him because I didn't have a lot of these PTFE blades, and so he gave me a great price on some because he said he had a ton, and uh, and so that gives me a little bit more flexibility in terms of whenever I feel one being done, I can just pitch it instead of trying to squeeze more uses out of it or, or something like that. And uh, so he sent along that razor, that Gem Junior, as a perk, just as a bonus, just as a nice gift. And likewise, I bought some fine accoutrements soap from Refined Edge on YouTube, and he sent me along uh, Moon Soaps Old School. And I have not uh, this is great because I have not tried uh, this type of this razor, um, and I have also not tried Moon Soaps at all. So this will be my first try with them. Uh, I think that the reading that I've done with Moon is uh, that people are just very happy with them. And so I'm looking forward to it. They, uh, he had a couple different soaps, and I looked at this one, read the scents, uh, tobacco, vetiver, leather, mahogany, sweet vanilla, all sounded really good. It could be a really nice uh, scent right along what I like. And so I said, hey, that one sounds good. I'd love a sample of that one. So he packaged up some smushes and I'm going to use my scooper here. And uh, uh, then I'm going to press those into the bottom of the bowl. Uh, the scooper is going to tell me how much I uh, use. And, uh, and I'm going to use only a certain amount because then I can make the best use of my samples. Turn out I really like it. Then I can make sure I don't uh, generate twice as much lather as I need. Uh, and then that way I can get, you know, double the soaps, uh, double, double the uses out of it. Uh, give me enough, enough tries to say, hmm, do I like this enough to pick up a tub of it? And so there we go. I'm going to get my face wet. I'm going to measure these uh, smooshes and then uh, measure out enough for what I think might be a good for one shave and press that into the bottom of the lather bowl. All right, here we go. Face is wet and the soap is ready with the Gem Junior. You open it up. There are two hooks in the corners there that keep the blade from sliding out once you put it in. There are also two end guides that keep the blade from moving to the left or to the right. And that's really all, other than the, uh, the pressure from this top clip that, that keeps the razor in place. So here we go. And there we, there we are. Now you 
notice that underneath here, there's quite a bow. This blade is sitting in this bed and it's actually bowed quite a bit. And so it's not like the saber from Blackland that you've seen me use lately, uh, where it's all kind of up close to the blade and touching it, custom fit kind of thing. That this is the blade is touching on the corners and then the spine is touching some on the back and that's pretty much it. It's definitely not touching on what is not technically an open comb, but in terms of what's going to be touching your skin, it might as well be an open comb, I think. All right. Close that guy down. This one does have a, a slight bevel of maybe three or four millimeters right from the edge. And then you've got the big flat space here. So, uh, HD tells me that this is kind of a, uh, a good starting place when you advise people about SE razors because there are more razors that are more aggressive than this, this one. And there are also more razors that are more mild than this one, like the G-Bar, the Featherweight, and the uh, one I used recently, um, the bullet tip. All right, so that's ready to go. And my brush has been soaking now for 14 minutes, so that's probably gonna be just fine. Border brushes need a few minutes to soak. And uh, if it's one that's well broken in, then three or four minutes is all I need as a minimum. But a lot of times I'll do more just because I can shake out some of the water and here we go there's the smush probably about a quarter of a teaspoon is what I gathered up out of uh, the different smushes that he uh, sent me and uh, maybe a touch more than that but probably right around a quarter teaspoon I do like to err on the side of a little too much soap in the case that uh, it happens to be a soap that I need more product on. And also, because I want to get a good dose of the scent, I don't want to undershoot it and have enough lather to kind of get the job done, but, but not enough lather to give my nose some enjoyment uh, during this first impression of the scent. As you can see, that little bit of soap is turning into... This one has a lot of tallow. The website said. I think it was saying that this is kind of their flagship. They made, they said on the site that this was a soap that just had to be made and it's manly. They used words to describe it like deep and rich, complex, timeless, and manly. And so again those notes that are in it, uh, it's a, a top note of tobacco they say. And then it sits on top of vetiver, leather, mahogany, and sweet vanilla. Now, when I started to add the water, the scent really started to come alive. It was quite weak in dry form. From the beginning, from the start here, I can see I'm going to end up with plenty of soap. So that's good. Two teaspoons in it now. Tilt you down to have a better view of the lather. It's looking really nice. It's got a sheen to it. Oh, look at that elasticity. Now, I need to be careful. I think they did say they super fatted it. Or maybe that was the other base. He was kind enough to send me two moon soaps. And the other one was Amaretto. And I'm a huge fan of those Italian, uh, traditional Italian, marzipan, cherry almond type, um, 
type scents like like Chella. And so I really wanted to try the Amaretto Special. This looks just divine. Really nice. And this looks like it's it's kind of maturing and getting creamier as I as I mix it. That's tremendous. Get a feel of it here. Oh, very slick. Um, I believe this is a company that uh, uses their own tallow. They are associated with a butcher. Maybe even part of their own company is a butcher or something like that. That is slick. Wow. That is really slick. Twenty-four hours of growth is what we're gonna be cutting off today. Normal. Let's go ahead and use let's put in half a teaspoon. I was gonna say let's go ahead and use this, but let's put in just a little bit more water. Is looking very nice. Oh yeah. All right. I bet I could go wetter if I wanted to, but I think I'll just roll with this. Just so I, um, I can tweak it on my face if I need to. Uh, add a little bit of water, but. And this way I also get to experience it in a nice creamy state. And in case it's not, in case it does need to be wetted a little bit, you can experience kind of both sides of, of the same shave. All right, get my face wet. All right, moon soaps. Feels very nice. Creamy. Oh yeah, wow. Wow. I have got an excess on my face. See the textures there? I could probably use a little bit more water. Taking just some of the excess and putting it back in the bowl. And then we'll add a little bit of water. And as you can see, it continues to build up uh, more soap. See, I can do that again. Uh, build up more lather. And that means that I was right to add the water. Matter of fact, I can probably use my fingers and collect up maybe a third of the lather that's on my face. Save that for later. One thing to look for if you're fine-tuning your lathers. 
take your brush and do the movement like here and watch what happens. Uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a little bit of clumping right here. And sometimes I want to add water until there's no clumping like that. So I'm going to have some soap. Little craters and clumps. Sometimes I want to keep going until that's all gone. In terms of adding water. Maybe the clumping is just perfect for what you like. Yeah, see this, this is even needing more water. This is a really nice base. Look at all this leather. <laughs> I think I've got almost got four teaspoons pushed into it. More lather is gathering around the base of the knot. More lather is gathering around my goatee. Got lather on my ears. So this is telling me that this is a, a good conservative soap where you don't have to use a ton of product to get a really nice lather. The scent is not strong. That's a little disappointing. It's, it's not really even medium. I don't know if this scent strength is indicative of what they have, but it is a little bit on the on the love side. And look, it's it's I'm uh, I'm continuing to add more water, and as you can see, the brush is still making lather. Wow. And this, my friends, is sometimes what happens when you try a soap a really good one for the first time. You don't want to overwater it. Handle's getting slippery now. You don't want to overwater it. And so with a really good base like this, you end up underwatering it. Now, there we go. It's settling down. Look at that. And when it's really thick near my Adam's apple right here, yeah, there's a crater, little pocket right there. But right here in the main section, a nice kind of farm rose, no clumping or anything like that. I think this is right. I wouldn't want to take it any further than this, I believe. Well, we've definitely giving the lather plenty of time to work into my skin to be able to protect it well and we're looking at you know five and a quarter teaspoons of water here 
And I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of this into the bowl because, goodness sakes, it definitely needs it. So six teaspoons of water currently in use. And take a look. All this that's right here on the, on the lip, that's what I removed as excess from my face. So if you want a thick, dense lather, looks like Moon is going to be able to give it to you. I think I saw it on Maggard's or somewhere for 20 bucks. That's high compared to some uh, soaps. But if you're talking about a somebody who's associated with a local butcher, maybe even their own butchery, um, I mean, that's doing great things for conservatism and conservation rather and uh, you know that sort of thing using of resources and all that okay so uh, Jim Jr. again my technique with these single edge razors is to keep that blade angle low very small handle maybe more out than I might normally do with a double edge so I'm definitely moving a little slower because of that so that I can because the muscle memory is not there since I haven't spent most of my time with double edge razors so like I advise uh, new folks I want to slow down take my time be premeditated about my angles and so far when I've done that I've been rewarded with a close and comfortable shave. Uh, ninth, ninth use on the blade. Oh, that's just moving through easily. Wow, that is just... It's, it's got a scratchy sound to it. But the feel is not scrapey. I think it's got the scratchy sound because if you look, the connection here for the handle goes up and then over. And then we've got a lot of extra pieces that uh, have hollowness and the ability to move and vibrate. And that vibration causes sound. The top cap, that tray that I said the blade sat on top of, uh, all those could potentially, due to the uh, vibration of the edge moving across the skin could amplify that slight vibration sound. But so far I like this. A lot better in terms of the feel than the bullet tip, for instance, and the clog proof. Now, if I end up with a lot of irritation at the end of the shave, then that may alter my enjoyment of it. But in terms of the feel, it's very nice. I can see why people turn to these guys, that's for sure. Wow, I think I think it's cutting well. Okay, I put more water, another teaspoon, in the bowl. And as you can see, it's starting to resemble more uh, marshmallow cream. Very fluid. Mm-hmm, that's what I'm talking about right there. Look at that. Not very much contour. And that's how I like it. Maybe you like your sticker, and that's okay. This is how I usually like mine when it's a good soap, when it's a good quality lather, when it's a good soap that the uh, just has all the right ingredients that it can handle this kind of 
hydration. Yeah, this is terrific. Wow. Nice. I don't really like how messy it gets. I prefer it if it stayed on my face, but um, yeah, I'm kind of getting used to it. Plus, uh, I'm wearing, I usually I will save a shade shirt so that I'm not trying to spend the rest of my day with the same shirt, you know, with soap clods all over it. All right, now, that first pass, as I did a rinse, I was feeling still some stubble. So the, the first pass did not just annihilate the hairs, but that's okay. We're not focused on cutting the hairs all in one shot. And who knows, with this design, maybe it's designed so I can open, open the uh, blade angle up just a little bit more instead of uh, like the clog proofs and the bullet tips. not sense so far any irritation building up yeah oh that knocked that stubble down very nice and we're talking some pretty good uh, residual slickness after the fact really nice yeah at my desk I put a blade in this razor and I was looking at the angle and thinking that maybe this one might not need to be quite as small of a blade to skin angle as the others just by nature of its design. Probably more, more shaves with it will bear that out. Don't want to make a snap judgment but I'm not feeling any irritation so What a wonderful, wonderful soap base. Wow. There are just so many good soaps out there, aren't there? All right, again, cross grain on my face. In the beginning, I kind of stayed away from these types of razors because they just don't look as to me at the time as manly and cool as the DE razors this reach, reach up and around curvy head looking thing but I'm really glad that I'm able to try this guy out I'm going to take, because I've got tons of lather, I've got another four passes in the bowl. And then we'll do a little cross grain pass right here. That's very comfortable. And there we go. I'll give it a rinse, take a look. Um, this soap base is tremendous. To me, this is close enough, and maybe even equal with the great ones out there, Barrister and Man, and uh, Noble Otter, Declaration of Grooming, uh, those terrific ones. Holy cow, uh, that have just been the tops for so long. Um, other makers, I guess, are figuring out such good uh, soap bases that 
have that creaminess. And this is what I look for in a soap to, to take on a whole bunch of water to be super slick, but still have a creaminess to them instead of getting too thin. And this is one of the ones that, that does that really well. And I mean, if it's not as good as some of those others that I've mentioned, then um, I mean, it's close enough where it might as well be just as good. And in terms of performance while using this soap, I don't miss any of those other soaps. There's not a soap out there that I think I'd rather performance wise. And uh, the feel of the lather, the slickness, I don't wish that I had any other soap in my bowl. That's how good it is. And I don't miss, um, I, I don't think it's lacking. If, if he were to ask me what, how would I change it? I'd say, I don't know. It's just tremendous. Uh, so I'm very happy, Refined Edge. Thank you so much for this sample. Um, just a, another top-notch soap base. And so to me, is it worth the 20 bucks? Well, what I've shown is that about a quarter of a teaspoon is going to give you almost twice as much as I need for a shave when it's constituted like I do. And so that means it's going to last a very long time. And so for me, 20 bucks, not, I do not have a problem shelling out that much for this soap in terms of what I look at it giving me in return. Quantity of shaves seems to be very high. Quality of the lather, very high. The only thing, the only hesitation is the scent strength. For you that need a mild soap, a mild strength of this scent, then this is going to be a good one for you. I'm a little disappointed, like I was recently with Valedictorian from Summer Break, because both of these profiles read like things that are some of my favorite scent notes. And so then when I, when I use it and I don't really smell it very much during the shave, it's not really part of the event due to its low strength, that's disappointing because there was the potential there to be stunning. So that's the only weak part that it comes to me. Now this was a sample that was sent to me and sometimes samples do lose a little bit of uh, power in the strength department, but uh, I'm so glad I got to try it out. I, I now know that that this soap base is the top, just top notch. Um, I, it's it's such a, a low level scent that I don't really get the vetiver, leather, or mahogany. I do get a little of the sweet vanilla, and I get a little bit of the tobacco. It's very pleasant. It's enjoyable. It's just very light. And so I don't, uh, I mean, it's even, it's even light when I stick my nose in the bowl. Um, so I'd say maybe it's a two during use, uh, and then bumps it up to a three if I stick my nose in the bowl out of 10, is, is my guess. Um, but wow, uh, if I was uh, stuck somewhere, this is the soap that I had to use. I would use it with joy. Uh, enjoy the performance. I just really, uh, uh, I would know that I would be experiencing top quality stuff and just to try to catch those hints of the scent, you know, as they would come along, you know. And uh, wow, yeah, very nice. Now maybe the aftershave is stronger. And so if you really like this, maybe couple it with the aftershave to get the performance and enjoyment of the soap base with hints of the fragrance. And then for a, a big dose of the fragrance after the shave, you could do the splash. The brush was very nice. The, uh, this Smoke Owners Club is a brush that will really open up over time. This is still fairly young, um, uh, but uh, 40, 50, or 60 uses, 50 or 60, I think. You can look in the description and see for sure. Um, but he is uh, wonderfully soft, easy to display, very comfortable, showed this lather in a really good light, and uh, 
I just wanted to use this guy tonight and I'm glad I did. Terrific brush. So these single edge razors, uh, this is basically the same head as the 1912, according to HD Shaves, and he's got a lot of knowledge on, in this area of the shaving world. And uh, the, good, the cool thing is this is over 100 years old. Um, it's a great uh, any irritation. It really did uh, move through the stubble uh, effortlessly. The, it didn't cut super keenly on that first pass, but by the time I was done with the second one, a lot of stubble, just most of the stubble was gone. Very efficient still, so tremendous. And uh, the feeling of quality here is terrific. You can unscrew the handle and change them out for other gem handles. In a recent video, I showed that fat Bakelite handle, and uh, HD said that it was very likely that I could switch this handle out if I felt like it for that big fat Bakelite handle. You know, you can customize them if you want. Uh, and so this is the the Jim Junior, as I said, and I was reading about um, the Jim Junior because I thought that fat Bake handle, Bakelite handle, treat razor that I showed you guys uh, in another video. I thought that was a Jim Jr., but it's not, it was not. And, uh, and so I was reading about it. Later on, I figured out that it was not. But what I read was they called this the Jim Jr. because prior to this design, the blades that were used were these wedge style that were much thicker than these single edge blades. And so by using this thinner, smaller blade, this was the junior sized blade. And so Jim Jr. And then later on, all of these type razors started using these. And so the junior was dropped, but that's the reason for the junior name. Not bad, huh? So, PTFE blade, make sure that's what you're using with these kind of razors. And with this kind of experience, now it wasn't smooth in the sense of a, a, a mild razor, like a timeless or even a tech or uh, the Fatips or a, a low head gap carve razor. Uh, it wasn't smooth like that. You kind of heard the scratchiness. It was a very interesting feeling. It moved easily and it glided nicely across my face. I liked the uh, the movement and the feel of the razor a lot better than with the uh, clog proof and the uh, bullet tip, you know, those guys. Um, so I can see why there are people out there who use these and really like them. I can see that. Really cool. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to try this guy out. Thank you, HD. Um, and we've got um, the soap sample to try out of the uh, Amaretto Special from Moon. Now, the curious thing about Moon is that they've got about half a dozen soaps on their website. But they also have three or four bases. They've, they've almost varied their soap base depending on the scent that they're doing or something like that. And the, uh, this was kind of a firmer croak style tallow. They emphasize the tallow with this old school scent. But then when I looked and was reading about the Amaretto, it was saying that it was a more soft cream. They actually recommended you poking uh, some out with your finger and putting it into your wet brush and then going to bold lather, something like that. So it's obviously a much softer base. And so um, with some soap makers, they have one base and then all the scents are in that one base. Well, it's a little bit different. You have to be a little bit more careful with uh, 
uh, moon. Uh, and so if you like a certain base, you may need to ask some questions to see if another scent you're interested in is in that same base or not. But I'm looking forward very much to trying that amaretto tomorrow. And then uh, Refined Edge was also kind enough to send me one more sample. A scent that I've actually been hoping to try for years. Dr. Johns makes some great vegan soaps. And his performance is comparable with other non-vegan soaps out there uh, to me. I like a lot of his scents. I like his artwork. Flowers in the Dark is a lavender scent that's got some woody notes in it and uh, something else and it's primarily lavender lavender usually isn't primarily my thing but i definitely have had some lavender soaps that i've enjoyed but i thought you know what if if somebody's going to make a lavender and tweak it with the woodiness and all that then that sounds like one i might like and so i just I've never really had it come up on the used market to where I was able to snag it. Uh, and then even when it did, I, I hesitated because I thought, you know what, I, maybe I don't have the money right now or, or because it is lavender after all, it's probably not going to be a favorite. And so he had some flowers in the dark, a refined edge sent me uh, some scrapings of that one too. And I smelled it and it was really nice. If there's a lavender that I'm going to really enjoy, this might very well be it. So that's another one I've been looking forward to try for a very long time. All right. Well, that is some good stuff today. Uh, it's balm or post-shave time. I was hoping to get a huge dose of these awesome tobacco, mahogany, leather, vetiver uh, type notes with this soap. And right now I'm not really smelling it on me at all. Uh, and so, manliness, the need for manliness in terms of a scent calls for Midnight Stag. And I've got some work to do after this, and so I'm going to sit around and just really enjoy smelling this. And my face feels comfortable and well treated enough to go for an aftershave with alcohol in it and that also says something about this razor really enjoyed it man that's good stuff all right time to clean up hey uh, I did it turn I did use up seven teaspoons of uh, water during this shave and uh, about a quarter of a teaspoon of soap and I made plenty of lather so that's the details there in terms of closeness baby butt smooth uh, close to it on my face without going against the grain and my throat area right there always a trouble spot my technique was good the razor the blade and the lather allowed me to get really close I'm very happy with the closeness here above average for what I can usually get without being able to go against the grain really happy with the closeness well guys we are done that was a wonderful shave felt great uh, lather top notch um, like I explained the brush the razor they were all terrific um, now I get to enjoy Midnight Stag for uh, a little while before I hit the sack. Um, that's it. Terrific. So I hope that there's been something in this shave to help you out in your journey. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Good night.